Hi everybody. Thank you for joining me for my presentation of my paper uh, entitled Implicit Bias in STEM Fields. This, uh, this paper was the result of some work that I had done earlier in, in the semester with a group of people here at Northwest College. We had a research team that was involved in a Perkins-funded um, research project for an organization called NAEP. And NAEP is, let's pull this up a little bit so you can see it, NAEP is the National Alliance for Partnership in Equity. And basically, NAEP's focus is to talk about areas where um, underrepresented groups uh, can achieve more equity through, uh, through ac action projects. So the group that I worked with here at Northwest College was a Perkins funded group and it was a combination of people in several different programs, some two year programs and some four year programs that we have here at the college um, that are Perkins funding eligible. So we had representatives from engineering, welding, photography, drafting, and then we had some administrators in advising and uh, one of our deans as well. So as we talked in this group, we met uh, once in Casper and once in Riverton, uh, and we're going to be meeting again in Casper in the middle of May. But basically, the problem that was presented to us was to find one area of inequity in our college, in one of our programs, and to develop an action plan to try to increase equity in that program. So as a group, we chose uh, women in, in engineering, an implicit bias toward women in engineering. So the first thing we did, we looked at registration records of engineering majors at Northwest College, and we found that we have 42 people who have declared engineering as a major, but only two of them are women. So we realized that our subset of women in engineering at Northwest College was really uh, too small to study in specific, um, and so we decided that we would go broader and take a look at some of the ways in which men and women differed in terms of their approach and their feelings about engineering. So we developed a survey and that survey asked um, several questions about how, not about ability in engineering so much, but in terms of what your attitudes are toward engineering. So the first question you'll see we have um, how strongly do you associate males and females with each of these areas, the third of which is engineering. So some of these fields are compared to engineering. I mean, like spatial reasoning and math tend to go hand in hand with engineering. Others are very different. So we asked how strongly do you associate these following with males and females? How interested are you in these areas? Um, do you agree or disagree with these statements? This has to do with workplace environment. Uh, and this also has to do with working with predominantly male or predominantly female uh, groups. Then also perceived expectation of success, or really this is efficacy, which is sort of more or less defined as being how well you think you'll do in a particular task-based situation, rather than just having confidence in your overall ability specifically how do you think you would be in these areas? And we did some demographic stuff. What were your grades in classes? What's your age? What gender do you identify with? This, uh, the gender question is binary. Uh, we didn't leave room for any intersex um, or other answers besides just male and female. Um, and then we asked about the statement which best describes your, neighbor, your major, how long you live in the Bighorn Basin, and then if there are students at Northwest College, how many credits do you usually take in a semester? and um, some things about your family of origin, your mother's education and your father's education, and also just sort of general familiarity with the field of engineering. So our method was to generate this survey. We distributed it first 
to uh, Northwest College students. We got 106 responses. One of the things you may have noticed on the survey, though, uh, we didn't really have a neutral response. The Likert scale lacked um, an item centered at neither male nor or female. And so for the purposes of this class, I used the same questions, but I rewrote the scale so that each one of them contained a neutral response. So what we actually distributed was the second survey. And the second survey we distributed to, again, to Northwest College students, but we only got about 15 responses. And I attribute that probably to survey fatigue, or perhaps because the questions were the same, the students uh, may have felt that they had already responded to this survey. So I had to go a little farther afield, and I posted it uh, to my personal Facebook page, where most of my colleagues are um, educated women over the age of 40. So you'll see that my demographic has skewed quite significantly toward that group. So the first thing I wanted to do were some ANOVA comparisons. And I really focused on the second question about engineering. In other words, um, how strongly do you associate engineering with males and females. And what I found was, I'm going to hide my face here so that you can uh, just see the, the rest of the screen, that um, for all respondents, the mean was 2.41, which means a slightly skewed toward, or slightly oriented toward male, more associated with males. A standard deviation of 1.05 was 71 um, full on respondents. By age group, you can see that the mean breaks down. Um, the skew gets a little bit more centric, in other words, less male-oriented, more fem more oriented toward the middle as the age groups get a little bit older. Um, for my ANOVA results um, on these comparisons, which uh, I have an F of 0.32 and a P that was much greater than 0 0.05, um, and an, at a squared of 0 0.02, which indicates a very small effect size. Actually, about two percent of the effect came from uh, from this from the age. So basically, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Now, the next time um, I did the same comparison, I took the question: How strongly do you associate engineering with males and females? Uh, this time, I sorted it by gender, and once again, you can see that females associate it less strongly with being males, with being a male-oriented profession than do men. Uh, however, my ETA score is still extremely small and my P is greater than 0 0.05. So the results are not statistically significant. So I cannot reject the null. Now, I, I need to uh, apologize to Jenny here because in my methods paper, uh, I stated that this was a significant, uh, there were some significant results. And um, to be honest with you, I don't even know what I was looking at because I've gone back through the pages and pages of ANOVA testing that I've done, and I can I can't even find it. So uh, so this is the part that will go into my these are the the results that will go into my actual paper, uh, and the other was I don't even know what it was. So moving forward, um, I then sorted to see maybe years you know we live in this very rural community where. Um, engineering is not a visible profession. So is there more of a bias based on the number of years that a person has lived here in Wyoming's Bighorn Basin? And once again, the answer is no. Uh, very small effect size and um, very large p-value. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So overall, my ANOVA test showed no differences at all. And then decided to do a couple of ANCOVAs where I correct or I held a covariate. Um, I took the same question and I decided maybe this is different if the respondent is a STEM major or a non-STEM major. So I looked at the independent variable um, as which gender do you identify as. So I'm breaking it down by uh, males and females. My dependent variable, how strongly do you associate engineering with males and females? And as I said before, I had looked at that comparison before in ANOVA, but I used as a covariate 
uh, major because I've broken that down into a science major or a non-science major. And uh, my first and cover results, same thing. Uh, very small f value, very large p, very small at a squared, um, indicating that we have a small effect size, almost no um, difference based on that covariate. So for my second ANCOVA, I wanted to do a factorial, and I played a little bit with this, but I wanted to pull into, um, into this ANCOVA, I wanted to use as my covariate uh, both how successful do you think you would be in engineering and how interested you are in engineering. So using this success factor, I found again that I did not have any significant results. So again, I cannot reject the, whole, the null hypothesis. Well, after that happened and I had five runs of, of insignificant results, I asked myself, what would significant results look like for this test? So I went back to the survey, and although this does not have a great deal of research applicability, I decided that I would take two uh, questions that I felt would be strongly correlated with each other. How interested are you in engineering, and how successful do you think you would be in engineering? Uh, and so since they were on the same scale, I did not have to reverse the scale, and because one would be low, either not successful or not interested, five would be high, very interested, or highly successful. And when I ran the ANOVA with those two uh, variables, um, what I did find was that this was significant, that my F value is 27.95, uh, my P value is less than 0 0.05, and my partial at a square is 57%, or 0.57, meaning that about 57% uh, was due to the fixed factor. So at least I got some significant results. So sort of at the last minute, I inserted another uh, result. And the reason I did this, I was thinking about this idea of what else could be significant. And one of the things that has sort of come to my attention is the fact that often men overestimate their abilities in engineering and women underestimate their uh, abilities. So what I did was I did another ANCOVA and this ANCOVA, if you'll see, I tested um, how successful you think you will be in engineering with a fixed factor of interest in engineering and a covariate of what gender uh, you identify as. So in other words, I was really looking for if men and women perceived this differently and uh, the answer is bingo. Look at that. When you look at the significance, this is very significant um, with an F of 22, um, a significance of 0 0.000, and a partial at a squared of almost 58%, or 0 0.579, uh, meaning that it's dependent, 57 or 58% of that relationship depends upon a covariate, which in this case is gender. So. I just found that to be interesting. Thought I'd throw it in at the last minute. Thank you for watching my presentation. Uh, please, I'll be, I'm here in real time. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.